Moving on, item nine, this is the agenda item that we just changed up, so 275.18, member Van Deventer. Um, well, this is a, a, an item for the whole board. I know that it was uh, Director Harness's desire that it be placed on the agenda for discussion. And essentially we're at, um, let's see, I mean, the background is that this is the overtime investigation. It's received some press. Um, we sent our recommendations. It was several recommendations of policy and two recommendations of discipline, recommending essentially the dismissal or termination of the officer and his lieutenant. Uh, we received back from the chief uh, a letter uh, informing us that some action was going to be taken on some of the recommendations um, and that the disciplinary recommendation was not going to be that they weren't that he wasn't going to follow the disciplinary recommendation um, and so the this is just here for us to discuss I guess if anyone wants to make any comments or anything Dean of Director Harness, I, I know that you're very familiar with all of this. <laughs> Excellent investigation, by the way. Um, do you know if there's anything in particular that he wanted discussed? Uh, Chair Galloway and honorable board members, um, I'm not sure of anything in spe specific that he wanted to discuss. Um, I think he wanted to leave it up to you, you all to explore the ideas, what you think you might want to do, might not want to do, the options that are available to you under the ordinance. Um, I, I, I don't know specifically, um, but I, I, I'm assuming that clearly, you know, the board and the executive director recommended termination. And there's not going to be any discipline, um, although there was concurrence on at least uh, two of the standard operating procedures of the three. So you would still have a non-concurrence, but in cases of a non-concurrence, the chief is required just to send you a written response as to why he's not concurring. And I don't know if the letter that he sent out. Do you have is, that letter? Yes, is sufficient for that or not? I don't. I, I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't know how the whole process. He, is. He's obligated to tell us why he doesn't agree. And do you, he do did we, send us a letter. He did. Well, yeah. But that's not the same thing. Oh, he can say, I say, I don't agree. If he doesn't say why he doesn't agree. He, he, did. he did. He did. Yes. Okay. He did. Yes. All right. I mean, I haven't seen it, so I, I don't know. Yeah, no, he, he did. And certainly, um, of course, the it's up to the discretion of the chief of police whether or not disciplinary recommendations are implemented or not. Um, but I don't know if there is any recourse available to us. I don't recall that. I, I feel like we just recently had this conversation and there's nothing that can be done. So, you know. Well, and, uh, Mr. Perard said, you know, the truth is that we, there are limited powers of this board and that's correct. You know, we make recommendations. I think that we certainly have served the community relative to making them aware of this problem. The editorial that was in the paper today was, um, was a good one in terms of the process um, and our process. Uh, so I think there's something to that. I think that they have made the promise of reform and the things that we can do moving forward to make sure they make those reforms. Um, and I think they're going to change the, clearly they agree with, uh, they concurred with some of the uh, findings. There wasn't anything to dispute. You know, it was double dipping for sure. You know, so they're going to change the policies. We, our job is now to make sure they do that and, um, and to pay attention to that through policy and, and through the board meetings. And hopefully, you know, it, it, I would I would hope that our desire would not be a one of gotcha and, and keeping oh, our goodness, thumb no. on it. Like we're looking to do policy reform and revision where when and where necessary to make APD, you know, participate in that process of improving APD and the relationship of APD with the community. I think at the end of the day, that's the goal. Yeah, it's not. It's not stick. It's not gotcha. Yeah. It's it's never going to be gotcha. It's about giving the police department feedback from the community about how we feel about certain things. We talked a little bit before about child abuse and what where they ought to be going with that. Keep us posted. We all want to know. This is no different from that. We think this is an unacceptable policy that allows this kind of thing to happen. We think it was a violation of existing policy, and existing policy is probably too loose. 
um, and I think he concurred on part of that. Um, he said he's going to take some action and change policy. Let's find out if he does. There was a little bit of discussion. I don't know if you were going to kind of talk about that at our policy and procedure meeting um, with regards to whether or not that letter served as our recommendation to APD, take a look at these policies and kind of start that process and in introducing it to open, start that, you know, ball rolling, um, or if we needed to do it in an another more formal way. I don't know if the board has an opinion about that. Um, well, I think we did discuss that and we, based on the response we received, uh, we determined that the recommendations had been successfully made through the CPOA letter because we got substantive responses as to the policy issues that were raised. Um, I think I would agree that we're, we don't have options left. Like the board's hands are really tied by the chief's response. Um, all that we can do is just, you know, provide our feedback on how we, we how we feel about, you know, his declination to uh, terminate or follow our disciplinary recommendations. And I think that all there really is to say about that, well, first a couple of clarifying things. I know for today in the op-ed, um, one of the reasons that the Albuquerque Journal Board uh, gave in support of the chief's decision was that this was a decision made just by like an investigator, like, oh, some investigator. Um, but that, that's not the case. The investigators are fact finders and don't have the authority to recommend discipline. Um, and so this recommendation, it was not um, political and it didn't come from somebody who lacked the authority. It came from Director Harness. Director Harness was using the chart of sanctions. He wasn't making it up. It wasn't based on personal feelings about what he thought about the conduct. It was what the chart of sanctions uh, guided us to recommend. Um, and I think because there were numerous policy violations that that's just where it got. There were just that many. Um, there was another, there was a statement also coming from the chief's letter to, you know, justify the decision that said that we relied on an expired policy. Um, and I would just like to clarify that SOPs don't expire. Um, there's an SOP on that, SOP 3-51-4C3. Um, so, the, so we weren't relying on any old or bad policies in doing this investigation and analysis. Um, I think that the, I, I certainly understand that it would be a difficult decision for, the, for Chief Geyer to terminate this officer or his lieutenant. I mean, yeah, that's tough. I don't, but it, I, I'm concerned that it's a, a little bit of a missed opportunity in that um, it would be a great opportunity to let the public know that accountability exists. Well, um, I think that's what I, what I hear him saying, and we're going to change the policy. But if I were the chair of the policy committee or on the policy committee, three months from now, I'd be looking to see if any of those policies changed. If it's in OPA, yeah. is it in PPRB? Well, where is it? So I, so I've, I've sought some clarification today um, because there was a lot of questions about like what an audit might be, who could do an audit, who has the authority to audit, do we? Um, and I, I am aware that the state auditor is going to look at the chief's overtime program. Um, and uh, it's a recommendation essentially coming from the CPOA that maybe the city auditor address matters that the state auditor does not address. Um, that way we can um, have a really comprehensive view of what's happening, see if we need to make recommendations outside of those that have already been made. Um, and then, yes, as far as determining or monitoring whether these changes are being made, I think that is our onus, and I'm wondering exactly how we do it. Um, because I know, for example, one of the things that Mr. Scotchtable found in his investigation was that in 2016 they were supposed to change this policy and they just completely dropped the ball on it. And I feel like everything we saw in that letter from the chief, every, that could happen to all of those things. And, and probably, it, you know, if anyone should be monitoring it, it should be us, it should be oversight. I'm wondering logistically how that takes place. Um, just a lot of follow-up emails, or what do you guys well, think? Well, <laughs> to my way of thinking, if, if in three months we haven't seen any action on that, 
Mm -hmm. And I think we draft a policy that says, you know, we're, we're going we're gonna to weigh in on this. You know, we think this policy needs to be changed. You know, uh, you know one, for one thing, the honor system, which probably isn't an SOP, uh, which they said they were going to get rid of and was part of the articles that I read, um, you know, clearly they need to get rid of that. But in terms of whatever policies do govern this, if I didn't see anything change in three months, I'd give them the benefit of the doubt. You know, I think he agreed with us, uh, you know, as far as the action, it was wrong. Mm -hmm. Now let's see if he does anything about it. You know, and if he doesn't, give him three months, and then we submit something ourselves, you know, that says we should think the policy, we, we're, we're still waiting. <laughs> should, should we maybe um, ask, should we maybe write a letter asking the chief uh, to come present what has been done in three months? And then that kind of How lets them know that we're... Let them know that we're interested in seeing what changes. I would write them a letter to that effect to say we are interested, actively interested. Um, our Policies and Procedures Committee would like to know when you make uh, decide to make changes in the policy to correct these things. And we'd like to be on the, on, on the list of people that you notify. You know, and then three months follow up. <laughs> you know, and say we haven't heard from you. What's up? Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's clear. It's good enough for me. So I, I'm kind of, you know, still in favor of having that as a standing agenda, agenda item on our PMP meetings, mm -hmm. just so that we don't lose focus right. of that, just like it's always there. Um, and then, yeah, following up, I don't know if, Tina, you have any suggestions for how to, you know, gently. <laughs> I don't think there's anything ungentle about that. Just yeah, Galloway, just honorable the facts, board. Right? Um, the board, uh, through the director, can send any type of communications to whomever it would like, as long as the board is in accord with what that content includes. If the board would like to send something now, that's something that you all can discuss. You can direct Director Harness's um, sit in today um, to do that, to have it prepared for the next meeting. If you know what you would like the general content to include, you could do that as well. If you would prefer to wait until your next board meeting for some time to pass, um, it, it's really up to the board and you can use your executive director for that. Any communication that is sent to the chief, does that need to be approved by the full board or can the board designate the subcommittee to do that and then report back like on a quarterly basis? The chair. Not the subcommittee, it would be the chair. Well, um, I mean, I, on my- On behalf of the chair. Yeah, but my, my suggestion is to have the subcommittee just draft those things no, rather than okay having the full board have to wait every month to do that. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of proposing that we just approve right now, we just make a motion right now, that I or Mr. Scotchtapol sends a letter that says we would like some sort of update in three months' time. Um, we're hoping that gives you time Within to make like, significant progress on the things that have been discussed, and yeah. that would be... Okay. That and I think be, it's an opportunity to say we appreciate the fact that you concurred on this and concurred on that, and, here's, and since you've said you're going to take these other actions, we'd like to be kept in the loop on that. We'd appreciate it if anything, any actions within the next three months, let us know. I'm good with that. Okay. Um, Chair Galloway, just to clarify, for your subcommittee meetings, you really cannot take action during those meetings of any sort. But if you take a vote tonight to delegate that authority to either the chair do. or the chair of that subcommittee, you may do that. But you, you cannot take action at your subcommittee meetings um, without risking a violation of the Open Meetings Act. Okay, then, then are we okay with a motion? I, I'm I move that uh, um, Chelsea and Mr. Scotchapol work on a draft. I don't decide between you whether it's signed by our chair or not, but that complements the chief for the things that he concurred with us on and asked to be included in the loop on the actions he takes from this point forward. I'll second. Leonard, you had your hand up to He's say something. He's got a look on his face <laughs> like, uh, oh. No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Um, so is that your, does that encompass what you would like to have done? Joanne's motion? Yeah, I mean, it was just an idea of how to make sure we're like staying on the ball kind of. Um, so I, I'm well, a big for fan I do of appreciate. Yeah, I do appreciate yeah. making a request, you know. Yeah. Um, okay, so we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion carries.